know before you go. Here are my 14 cruise tips, the things I wish I knew before we went on our seven night cruise with Celebrity to the Western Caribbean. One, the app. Download the app as soon as you book the cruise, then upload your credentials. This is how I discovered my passport expired during COVID. But for Caribbean travel, all I needed was my license and original birth certificate. Two, the parking. I took a picture of my parking spot before we left, so I was free to forget about it. FYI, parking is expensive. It cost me about $110 to park for the week. Man, that's how they get you. Three, check in. We signed up for a 1 p.m. check-in. They looked over our COVID test results, our identification, and put our luggage through the x-ray machine. Oh yeah, this is also where I found out we were about to board the wrong ship. Four, the room. We had a balcony room in the aft of the ship. That's the back. I get motion sick and was afraid that it would be shaky, but I was wrong. It was actually awesome. It was big and had an oversized balcony. Five, Wi-Fi. I thought the Wi-Fi package that came with the cruise was an actual Wi-Fi package. I was wrong and had to upgrade to premium. Why? Because the regular television only had two news channels, Fox and MSNBC. I joked that they wanted to create a civil war on the ship. They also had some pretty good random movies, but I ended up upgrading halfway through the cruise. There was a discount on day three. Or here's an idea. You can download a bunch of movies, shows, and books ahead of time just to be safe. The drink package. Originally, I had the classic package. This included the unlimited bar, and they also gave this to my teenager and marked it as non-alcoholic but we paid the same amount, so it was a huge waste of money. I ended up doing an equal exchange for a premium non-alcoholic package. This meant I could get smoothies, juices, frozen daiquiris, virgin of course, and anything else non-alcoholic. I ended up being a regular at the spa cafe with unlimited juices. This also included the specialty coffee bar, which was fantastic. Seven, the spa. Um, I get like $60 hour massages at home, so there's no way I was paying $179 for a massage. So anyway, that was the spa. Eight, the fitness center. There's a lot of amazing food on a cruise. Here's my strategy. First, always take the stairs, walk the outdoor track, and explore the ship for your morning exercise. The view from the gym is beautiful and they have great equipment. Make sure to have your book, podcast, or music already downloaded. You can't count on the TV on the machines to work. Fitness classes are about 20 bucks. I'm not a scheduler on vacation, so I did my own thing. Also, there is a sauna. Nine, onboard activities. There are so many great activities on board. If you are fun and social, there's dancing and trivia and gambling and comedy shows and Broadway-esque shows with great talent, singles meetups, painting, volleyball, and so much more. 10, the excursions. The excursions can be pricey, but this is why a lot of people take the cruises in the first place. Everyone always has great reviews on snorkeling, Mayan ruins, and dolphin swims. If you book through the cruise line and you get rerouted like we did, the cruise line will handle the cancellation. If you did it on your own, you have to manage that. Also, some people go with the people they meet upon exiting the ship. Make sure you use your street smarts and get back to the ship on time. On a safety note, I would advise not renting a scooter or a car in the port. We saw two separate cruisers get into serious accidents. The roads are not what we're used to if you're traveling from the States. 11, staying on board. Some of the best time on a cruise ship is when everyone else leaves and you stay on board and enjoy the low occupancy of the ship. It's really kind of great. 12, the food. Food, food, food. So much good food. 
I checked the restaurant menus every day on the app to see what was worth a two hour dining experience. The buffet is always fast, easy, and good, but you are not gonna get your steak or lobster tail in a buffet. Some of our table neighbors ordered double meat. Oh my God, that was so smart. If you're gluten-free or have any other allergies, double check with the buffet manager. Do not trust the signage on the buffet. There were a lot of things mismarked. The manager really helped me out and hooked me up with some good gluten-free options. But I did have to ask every single time. They said they're working on that. 13. The Return Breakfast and the coffee bar are open until 9 a.m. We were able to disembark at 7.30. You'll need your license and passport, or in my case, a birth certificate, so you can disembark. You can have your luggage collected the night before, or you can carry it with you. We carried it off because I don't like to wait around for people. We left our concierge slash housekeeper a little extra for taking great care of us for the week, and I actually remembered where I parked and had to pay that $110. To wrap things up, I'd say the best part about going on the cruise was to have somebody else cook, clean, make juices, smoothies, and give me coffees every day. The excursions were great. Being taken care of and resting really was my favorite part. I felt like I was in an all-inclusive luxury hotel on the water. I would even do the same cruise again just to try new things. See you next time on Doing Life with Michelle.